Okay, now we're going to take a look at one other setting that's important on the controls, and that is the brine gear on the reverse side of the control. What we can do as far as the versatility of the regeneration is going to be determined by the salt scale. Now there's two different labels available. There's a 3 to 18 pound salt scale, which simply tells me that the brine line flow control button is refilling the brine tank at a rate of a quarter gallon per minute. Or the second scale that we might run into on a control would read 6 to 36 pounds, which would tell me that we have a half a gallon per minute brine line flow control button. Whichever label we have, we must select the position for the white lobe pointer so that we know the volume of salt used per regeneration. Now, how much salt should we use? Well, that's a question really of how much resin or capacity uh, by volume there is in the tank. For instance, in our example of a, a cubic foot unit, let's use eight pounds since that's a, a fairly uh, universal uh, medium salt setting. With eight pounds of salt, we would recover 24,000 grains of capacity. And all we'd have to do is loosen this center screw and make sure that our brine lobe, the white lobe pointer, ends up on eight pounds. And then retighten that screw. And every time the unit comes around during regeneration, the refill poppet valve will be open for that amount of time that allows enough water, which will dissolve eight pounds of salt, to enter the brine tank. Now, if we wanted to change this, we have to be very careful in the case of demand regeneration systems because when you cut a salt setting, you're really reducing the capacity of that unit in terms of recoverable capacity. And in, in, uh, in we generally never want to reduce a salt setting on any type of demand system because the meter, in our case, is programmed for the number of uh, grains of capacity that the original volume of resin the manufacturer put in the unit and the original salt setting that the manufacturer put on the unit. If we cut that salt setting, we'll come up with some volume less than 24,000 grains, as we're using in our example. And conversely, you should not just arbitrarily increase the salt setting, because if you do that, the unit's going to regenerate as though it only had 24,000 grains, and now we'll be wasting salt and the homeowner won't be very happy with that. So the moral of the story is the manufacturer sets the salt setting knowing how much resin is in the tank and we should understand what the relationship is between the salt setting and the, and the volume of resin and what capacities those yield. But we don't want to arbitrarily make those changes unless we are doing it for a good reason. And there are reasons that we will want to increase salt settings. There are reasons where we may want to decrease. Uh, if you had some of the examples that Mike referred to before on an application, let's say uh, an RO unit that was using water at a rate less than what the meter registers, in a sense that would be similar to having an additional person in the family because it's using water every 24-hour period, but the meter isn't counting it. So we're understating the actual amount of water used relative to what was and we may want to increase the salt setting one pound or two pounds to compensate for something like that. Uh, in the case of cutting the salt setting, uh, usually you wouldn't want to reduce the salt setting for any reason unless you had extremely low hardness in the water and we were close to the maximum gallon setting on the meter, which is 2,150 gallons. In that case, we might want to cut the salt setting from let's say eight pounds down to six, knowing that six pounds of salt with a cubic foot of resin would give us about, oh, well, maybe 20,000 grains of recovered capacity. And, and let's say we had, uh, oh, four or five grain hardness of water. And, and so we're going to end up, we would cut the salt setting to compensate for coming up with some gallon program close to the maximum 2,150 gallons. And that's about the only thing I can think of, unless, Mike, you can think of something, that, some other reason why they might want to cut a salt setting. But generally, demand systems don't cut the salt setting. If I can just break in a second. Sure. The, uh, the meter settings that Bill was talking about, whether you use gallonage or people versus hardness, the two should complement each other. If you had 1,000 gallons of water available per regeneration and you built a reserve capacity for four people of 300 gallons, that 700 gallon setting 
should relate to the people versus the hardness type setting, and the two should go complement each other back and forth.